Hi mum, dad, quick note. I know you're, well, I know mum's interested in bridges and stuff. It's quite interesting, the Lee River is over there. I'm now on the border of um, Waltham Forest and Haringey, I think it's called, which is where Tottenham Hale what is and where that violence was. Looks like some bullet holes here in the bridge. But what's interesting is that here, that, and I never noticed this before, is an old bridge that obviously used to have the River Lee running under it before they straightened it out for the industrial, you know, I don't know whether it was an industrial revolution or whether it was just over the years, but I'm aware at several parts from walking the River Lee that it's been straightened to make it navigable. And, um, you know, it's almost straight as a die from uh, Three Mills, which is where the New Deal was, right up in, uh, to the top of Chingford and beyond. And um, this is quite interesting because there's an old fashioned sort of metal thing here. And um, just going across the road and film the other bit. I don't know if anybody's ever done a sort of um, book on the bridges of the River Lee, but I'm sure it's significant uh, in the sort of ev evolution of London, I suppose. So here we go. It's obviously been the bridge has been straightened. Uh, strengthened over the years, you can see that. And here there's water flowing. So there's obviously, um, you know, obviously uh, a stream either feeding it or um, bits escaping onto this original part. But other than that, it's completely sort of, you can see it's not used at all. The, r the water's relatively shallow there. So you wouldn't be able to get a boat out on that at all. Not even a canoe probably. You can see the pebbles underneath. So I'm just going to quickly, if I can, walk down here into Haringey. Is that how you say that? I've not really been aware of this borough before. So there we are. And just in front of that big white development and all these cranes, there's still a lot of development going on here through the Olympics, which is hoping to bring... I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in some ways because, you know, these things, confidence, it's like the markets, a lot of traders aren't giving things away at the moment because they know it's a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy where if you believe something's going to fail, and deep down they do, <laughs> then um, by saying it, it makes it worse. So everybody's being quiet on the negative stuff and being outspoken on the positive stuff and all this development that's going on um, is um, due to the fact that um, the Olympics are coming and it's just breathing optimism in the area along the River Lee. Now, very quickly, I'm coming up to the new part of the River Lee. So we're, I've walked now, what? This must be getting on for an eighth of a mile, I suppose, from that bridge to this bridge. So we can see how the original point of this little clip on this sunny day, it's always inspiring to capture the moment when the sun shines because we're facing a winter of discontent under the Tories. Um, but anyway, look, here we go. Suddenly there's all this new stuff going on. This Look, you can count the cranes. Somebody once said, I think it was Dad, you can see the level of optimism by the amount of cranes in the sky and bulldozers and excavators. One, two, three, four, five, I can see. Six, perhaps. And look, this is a waterbed here, look. Look at that. Sort of... You can see there more evidence of, um, you know, water being diverted over the years. And just give you a quick peek of the new River Lee. But, uh, there we go. So that's the new River Lee. Look, if I stand in a line, you'll be able to see how straight it is and how wide it is. And how deep it is for water. And boats, narrow boats, goods boats. Down that way, it's down to London. That will take you to the River Thames. And if I turn around here, you see in a straight line, as far as I can see, plenty of boats. There's a lock just there. Lock of that fire lock. Lock of that lock lock. Um, so I'm going to cross here in amongst this traffic so you can just have a little peek of the lock. Now I did photograph this in the past in black and white 
Um, I'm going to try and not run under a lorry. What a fitting way to go. And... Okay. Let's cross over now. And you can lock at that fire lock. You can even lock at that lock lock. There we go, look at that. What a development. Mum, I'm sure if you had time and money and stuff like that, you could do a sizable and interesting history of the River Lee with its locks, docks and two smoking barrels. See you later. Okay, so I'm um, continuing. Um, oh, I've just realised the light is on and the battery's going to go down, so let me just turn that off. So continuing our walk, this clip is from Mum. Continuing our walk down the River Lee. I'm actually walking up to Tottenham Hale. Sorry, not Tottenham Hale. Um, where am I going to? Somewhere near Enfield. Uh, Ponder's End, that's right. To deliver this CD to uh, Big Doe's mum. So it's quite a big moment in my life, this career. Personally, professionally, if I can use that word. And, um, yeah, walk along the river with the water is always good. I find to contemplate not so much time now in that field that I used to go to every day I feel I've moved on from that now um, thinking a bit bigger and a bit yeah, you know, more more focus has naturally come in my life I don't want to ramble on like some twat but just to let you know that it's all positive now and uh, I'm not drinking at all so it's a fresh start hopefully now belatedly but anyway, enough of that. Um, so yeah, lovely day here today. It's about, um, must be about, well, by the look of that sun, because I don't have a watch. It's about two o'clock, bang on. Um, what do I want to say? Yeah, going out to take this CD to uh, Big Dose Parrots would be quite interesting because I haven't met them before. I think it's probably a single not a single child, but a single parent, because there's never any mention of the dad. So, uh, it's, quote, ghetto country. <laughs> so, uh, and it's where, Ponders and you would have heard on, that new, on the news uh, a couple of weeks ago, where that kid was unfortunately murdered um, in the park. So I'll be walking through that park, and um, I'm not saying hoping to see evidence or flowers, but... I won't be surprised if there are some fresh laid flowers for this 14 year old that was stabbed in the head I think so that's that's pretty bad um, safe from all that mostly in Waltham Forest and I'm actually walking out of my jurisdiction at the moment because I'm on this side of the river Lee. Over there is Waltham Forest, and here I'm in Haringey, or whatever it is called. Glad I don't live there, because I can't pronounce it. Um, yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up. Looking forward to getting back into this track now. I've been playing around with it for ages, had all these problems, and... Whew, absolutely you know, amazing, but... I think I've got over all the stumbling blocks now and the sun is shining and um, we're going to get this home, this track home and uh, see what we can do with everybody giving their best shot. So thanks for the assistance so far. I'll keep the film running to see these narrow boats go by. So you get to see that. You can see the water here is clear. So that's a good sign. Um, you can see the also, also the depth of it there. So here we go, two long boats, two river barges coming up, which are down from Chingford. And they are probably, well, possibly, <laughs> holiday barges. There's a big um, thing going on here now with holiday barges. So, uh, smile there from that boat. And um, here's another one as well. So, West Yorkshire there, that's nice. A couple of dogs. So there we go, there's a more industrial 
one in the background and a couple here a clutch of narrow boats up here with people living as we get further north now I'm going due north out of London um, past Chingford on my right these are the big water uh, water reservoirs for London there on those raised banks and um, up to Ponder's End which is in Enfield which again is in a different borough I can't remember it might be in Haringey but uh, we shall see on this uh, is it Tuesday or Wednesday I don't know I lose track these days but uh, let's see what we can find see you later okay so I'd say I'm about halfway now on my journey and the reason why I've started the camera rolling again is because I'm just about to take a bridge over the River Kwai, no, a bridge over the River Lee. Um, so let's see what this involves. Ponder's End, three and a half miles. Now there we go, you can't say that I'm not getting my exercise or not getting out enough. Um, I remember f photographing this before, this is Stonebridge Lock, which is lock number 16 on the River Lee. Looks a bit congealed there, but um, again we see a sense of River Lee being straightened um, and how deep it is there look you can see by that lock that uh, how deep the water is and there'll be a, a depth below there as well so that must be um, at least eight feet I would have thought plenty of boats which is good um, and over there we can see evidence of the original River Lee um, where it used to run and this sort of dormant water there and I don't know if you can see there's a looks like a Canadian goose there so a lot of development going on and there is a little plaque welcome to the River Lee navigation talks about the Walthamstow March nature reserve the Tottenham marshes and um, it's got the different boroughs down here so there's Lee Valley Herringay Council and Waltham Forest so I'm back in Waltham Forest now as previously stated the River Lee in its new guise forms the border of the borough so there we are look Water seeping through there, and um, plenty of boats in sight today. And as the ugly pylons veer over to Haringey out of sight, we're left with a clear, brightly lit path in one's life. Join us. So, continuing my what is now looking like to be a travelogue, um, we're now due north getting near upon the Zen you can see the industrial chimneys there in the background um, something to notice the riv the original path of the River Lee lies down there and uh, quite significantly down there's water flowing and I've seen a few herons but it's interesting that the water level here is being raised considerably high um, to allow the navigation to take place so there's about a 12 foot gap between, there's not much to see here, I, I don't think that the camera will pick up, but there's about a 12 feet um, drop um, of the current water levels and it's a shame the camera, there's a memory glitch on this card, but the last clip I made back there over a bridge over the original um, Riverly didn't pick up, but you could clearly see um, there is um, a sizable gap and the water level uh, what the hell let's go off piste because we can now look this is the River Lee current water level I'm just going to go down here hopefully I won't find any Eastern Europeans lurking but look at this this is quite interesting there's a, a bank concrete thing which is obviously when it used to be used and we can see there that you know that's completely unusable for um, any form of navigation even a canoe 
and we look into the distance there and it's obviously grown up over the years overgrown over the years and um, we have to as I said walk up now to the new present level of the River Lee that makes it highly navigable and there must be a, a depth there of coming on for eight or maybe even ten feet so interesting to note and that goes right down to London straight as a die and this goes straight up to the ghettos join us okay so walking up um, there's actually looks like there might be a diversion here but I'm just gonna have to go over here because I found another bridge over the original River Lee so I'll have a quick look at this there we go have you ever seen a river like that completely grown over with a modern version running next door to it now if we turn around here you can see various evidence of controlling water levels and previous attempts to give some sort of navigability if there's such a word to this stretch of water but obviously to ill effect so they must have spent a considerable amount of man hours and um, money and time as well one would have thought developing this stretch of the river lee over many years perhaps so and the result now is this some twinkling on the shimmering water and we're gonna turn the camera off Thank you. you can see here there's a bit of trouble at mill lad with the um subsidence of the bank falling in now it's a, quite a long way down there so they've come out to fix it and this is a uh, maintenance barge which is something i haven't seen before um operated by the British Waterways of London called the Chestnut and there's a team of about 10 men down there working away trying to fix this to prevent a sizable spillage like what happened in the dam of Amsterdam plenty of bridges going over here and carrying things over and we're heading now, prepare for the landscape to change because we're arriving at Doomageddon so the pylons are back the piping, the concrete, the smoke and we even noticed the clouds hovering at our head with the graffiti artists waiting under the bridges with hoods, caps, ropes knives and drugs. Let's go and join them. Okay, um, we're witnessing a bit of territory fighting here with the um, the coots or the moorhens depending on where you come from. Um, there's two simultaneous fights going on here. I would thought it was a sex scene to start with. Maybe it is how they do it but um, there's a considerable fracas going on in the water. And I'll attempt to zoom this thing in, it's not very good on zoom, but um, you can maybe see there that uh, there's three, maybe it's a love triangle or a love quadruplet. Um, but there's another banging there and it's like people now have come to watch. So it's uh, quite a big deal. Um, it's like the... Uh, Muslims attacking Afghanistan. It's showing no signs of um, stopping. But we continue and we pass. Well, ahead of me, I can see about eight different pairs of coots that um, are living in more of a peaceful state. Oh, oh no. Jesus! Okay, let's, let's zoom out. I didn't realise that I was... There's a full-on attack going here as well. There's like... It suddenly blew up. 
And look at this one. He's going in for the kill. Maybe it is. Maybe it is a. This is their mating season. I'm a bit ignorant in this um, regard. But um, they're definitely being warned off. Three sets of fighting over there. Maybe, maybe that's how they do things. Maybe the sun shines and they're out to plant their seeds. But um, interesting. This guy's pedalling like crazy, but he looks like he's got his head down. He's keeping pace with me, and there's like a pair of three coots coming up. So let's just see what happens. I might be able to pitch or something. They're talking like crazy. Fighting and squealing down there. Another pair here. Squealing away. And we continue. Okay, I uh, just picked up the camera again. It's getting darker now. Um, interesting to note that the original path of the River Lee is now over the other side of the river. You can see the trees and the sort of sunken bit. Um, probably not only disregarded, but largely forgotten about. Um, this is a place I used to come uh, when I was living in Chingford. Chingford, where I used to live, is about two or three miles away from where I am now. And I used to joke to Peter, the guy that I used to live with, that I used to f find myself rejuvenated by walking along this bit. And, you know, used to come back full of blooming life and stuff. And he wasn't, and I got offering to clean his windows, and he was wondering what the hell was getting on to me. And it was only later that I realised there's two mega high powered pylons either side carrying millions of watts. Um, so, not saying there's any truth in it, but it's perhaps not surprising that I actually, and this is a bit weird, that um, the feeling I got from walking along this bit was so significant that I actually remember researching landlines and to find out whether there was, you know, bits where people go to to get, you know, to pick up ancient energy levels and stuff and then it, I lay you know it's only later that I observed these this double pylon line um, now what it, how good it is or bad you know how bad it is one will never know but you know from sleeping next to a clock radio with the transformer inside it that uh, it can interrupt your sleep patterns and electricity is one of the most powerful you know things uh, naturally occurring things through lightning that there can be and, and most almost you know destructive and to look up at these pylons now one either side of the river lee is you know i'm not going to attempt to get scientific or technical but one would imagine that it's typically comparable to a naturally occurring lightning bolt that um you know produces all this ozone and charges the atmosphere and um, things like that so um, and there's been obviously cases of kids being born deformed and having cancer and stuff from living next to these pylons so they're an ugly thing but I'm not claiming to be sensitive to it or maybe I am but I can definitely pick up a, a some sort of charge that's out of this world okay enough about that um peaceful sunny still on our march forward i suppose this clip is the follow-on from that original clip that i made you when i walked south down the river lee to um go to the uh new deal thing and made it bang on time amazingly um so this is now going north, this is going the opposite direction from where I set off last time. So, um, 
a different journey that is ending is unknown. So we continue. Okay, here's a relatively peaceful part of the River Lee. Um, no boats in sight. Uh, I've got ducks here, um, some coots with no infighting, and a pair of swans there. So it's obviously a little collective. You do get this occasionally. You'll get nothing, and then you'll get a, you know, wildlife living in in harmony, which is a good sign. Um, so just to sum up, there's two pairs of ducks there, there's a coot over there, there's a coot there, there's a pair of coots there, two ducks there, and then another coot there. And there's one more duck over there. Um, always look for their partners. Um, this would indicate that this coot is a lonely coot. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is rather weird. Oh no, look, there we go. He's heading back home. There's the other coot there. So that's a good sign. Don't like to see lonely coots. Lonely coots are a bad sign. In the distance, we've got pylons either side of us, unfortunately. Um, and another bridge, and I believe from memory that there's another lock coming up here. So another, we'll have another lock at that lock, lock. Okay, and um, another pair of ducks, a couple of ducks there in the water. So let's explore. We'll do one more crossing and one more bridge, I think, and then we're we're bridged out and we're locked out but in the meantime we'll have a quick lock at this lock lock okay the bank over there is full with resting drakes oh thank you um along with floating water bottles and devilishly looking black plastic bags so we're almost at this lock so we'll have a lock at this lock lock I'm determined to get that right point to note uh hidden in the undergrowth there is a you might see a little hint of yellow with the word spreading on it um it looks quite new as well i've read in the waltham forest news recently that they're not going to get waltham forest council do not want to get caught out by the bad weather again so they've invested in two brand new gritters so presumably that's one over there that's obviously not used in the, almost the height of summer now it feels like today obviously summer has passed it's officially over and um, what are we into now? What comes after that? Autumn, is it? Autumn leaves. Yeah, must be. Um, so we're coming up to this lock. I'm going to leave the camera rolling because it's sunny. And um, I like the sun. Right, I can see this. It looks like algae. Now, algae is becoming increasing. I don't know why I'm telling you about all this stuff. I must be picking it up on Radio 4 and like Radio uh, BBC World Service all this these science programs in my sleep because I wouldn't consciously read all this stuff but they do have some amazing programs on there so I'm obviously taking it all in um, algae is one of the new um, sources of all sorts of things energy cancer research um, all sorts of stuff so that's interesting to note um, we've got a little old-fashioned iron bridge here now and the sign there says Lee Valley Leisure Complex quarter of a mile but we're not going there we're going up and we're staying on the Waltham Forest side now this is Pickett's Lock which is lock number 15 so we just have a quick look over the edge it's a single lock lock and there's the old lockman's cottage or bungalow that um, it's probably not used by a locksman, if that's the word. A couple of picnic tables, and we can see the river now carving off to the left. Now, whether that's because the um, 
reservoir is on the right and the river was built after the reservoir or it was straightened out after the reservoir was built one doesn't know but it would indicate as such because if the water if the river was developed first then a it wouldn't bend round because it's been entirely straight so far and b the um reservoir wouldn't be coming out protruding out this way so um hence that is actually a um rhetorical statement is that where the answer is i can't remember not so good on english these days but uh we'll have a quick look at this weir um now because we see a big sign saying weir which presumably occurs when the water is uh, higher um, and this is a runoff point for the water and it runs off but um, alas because there's no rain and we're in the end of summer and the beginning of autumn got that right um, the weir is a bit weird because it's not used so we're going up here and uh, back to this straight point and we can see it bend around now again to the left so we can see here now it's been utterly straight until here bends round here to the left this is not a beer it's a diet coke by the way if you're wondering and um going left again and again the reservoir here runs in a straight line sort of northeast i suppose so sorry northwest so that would you know definitely indicate that the water reservoir was built before this river was straightened otherwise um the um this would presumably be straight still like the pylons i mean the pylons are sort of avoiding the reservoir and precarious placements but beyond there you can see them going straight down to Ponder's End which is where we're heading so Ponder's End must be probably two miles away from here and you'll be relieved of my rambling commentary on this sunny autumnal day 2011 okay we can see the first sights of Ponder's End now um, we've gone around the bend figuratively speaking and we're straight on the straight and narrow now which is quite significant um, there is a golf course there to my left you can see and hear the occasional swipe and the whacking of the club against the nylon of the ball as it springs into life and shoots over there towards the 10th green there you can see some guy in a red jumper um, there used to be weirdly enough there was a massive massive factory just beyond this bridge um, up until about six months ago and it's completely flattened now it's the old Ford parts factory and it was huge the car park is about the size of you know three football uh, pitches absolutely massive and um, it's just completely gone they just leveled it and flattened it out and there's all this like security cameras and everything and it's just not there anymore which is weird it's like a completely new view now that's you know going on and by the sound of excavators and diggers in the background it sounds like they're already fast on the case of um of building something new and it was interesting to note again this morning on radio 4 that they're saying a lot of these houses these cheap houses that were built um during sort of the end of thatcherism and stuff where you could get cheap mortgages are being flattened and demolished before the interest has even been paid on the loans that were originally supplied to build them so there's uh, food for thought as we continue on our path um, pair of swans in the distance um, no boats to be seen I'll stop the camera again if there's any sign of a longboat in the heart of the Lee Valley I suppose here now um, just going past Lee Valley Golf Course there's Lee Valley Campsite over there and there's supposed to be some chalets um, that I mentioned to dad about you guys um, renting 
um, self-catering mini chalets um, on you know right here right next to River Lee which must be north of Pont des End because I, A I can't imagine them to be at Pont des End but B I've walked down there several times and I've never seen any um, riverside chalets so um, I guess that uh, it's always a bit of a challenge to keep the commentary going passing people I sometimes I feel I should stop um, the camera but then other times I think it's a challenge to keep it going <laughs> so like I just did and uh, so there you go that's no, yet another sign of endless optimism and I'm duly being charged by a double set of pylons that stand like four-legged steel giants as they traverse our topography of this part of the world. Now here, I mentioned, you know, wildlife living in harmony. No wildlife at all for the previous mile or so. And then here we get a pair of coots living alongside a pair of swans. Now I'm sure the word pair is not right. It just doesn't sound right. So please correct me on that. Um, it's weird. I would like to know why you get these collection of wildlife living together. I don't know whether it's because they're attracted to a natural food source or maybe a freshwater inlet or something that they know they can survive with or whether they there's some sort of like psychology involved where they do naturally group together maybe a form of intelligence that we haven't um, investigated fully yet like we are on the case with the dolphins and finding out how they are deeply intelligent species and uh, also have the keys to a lot of life's unsolved questions here on Russell Hurley's Philosophy Hour. Right, um, so there is Ponder's End in the background um, and this is the old Ford factory or the, 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 the uh, site of the previous Ford factory completely just not there and um, you know this is a view that wasn't possible six months ago because you wouldn't be able to see those buildings because there was a huge huge factory here and already they've built these new units so it's incredible the speed of development these days with all the technology and the availability of prefabricated buildings and you know everything is available off the internet now and you know in mail order you can get 12 foot automated garage doors from China delivered in 48 hours or your money back so that's the we want it now we want it fast that's the generation that uh, led us to this gigantic economic crisis um, so yeah okay that's it for now. thank you can you turn that off turn it off please thank you Okay, as promised, um, started the camera again because there are it's a little village here of boats, a sort of sort of boating community, and no doubt there is a probably a sense of community there with people borrowing stuff and neighbours and you know friendly and all that sort of thing. Um, there are there's a row there of four wide, three deep, so that's twelve, and then there is another two deep four going back there so that is eight and then there's one under the bridge so that's uh 12 plus nine is 21 boats there which is you know quite interesting it's probably everything you need there to be self-sufficient and um what i'm quickly going to touch upon now before we leave I'm now leaving the water side here, so again it's a significant moment here. So we veer off here before the other lock that we're not going to lock at lock and as promised going to quickly film this redundant um, car park which was left over from the days of the um, Ford parts factory and the weird thing is <laughs> It looks really frightening. I remember this before when I used to come down sort of investigating this park. Um, 
it looks quite frightening and official with all these like security cameras and beepers and stuff but as the place is no longer there and I will actually be going left in a minute into Pont Zen proper but as the thing is no longer there it's tempting and I'm gonna do this today and it's gonna be funny to see what happens but you've got all this here this is the main entrance uh, Vice Vicedon, employees parking. Vicedon was the outsourcers for the um, Ford Parts factory. Now, it's just quite interesting to see is that, look at that, I've never seen an overgrown parking with even a building there at the end on the right there and a bridge leading over the River Lee to the what was originally the factory. And it looks quite weird, it'd be a brilliant scene for a a film because it's very rare that you get a space like that so big concreted yet overgrown it's just full of unique character and this is one thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna press this right and we wait in fear and do a run but I'd be really surprised if anybody answers because that thing can't be oh Christ police are coming No, um, there's nobody there. It's redundant. It's, uh, what's the word? But anyway, the, um, there's lock 14 down there, which is, um, William something lock. Hello. And, uh, we're, we're now crossing the river, river Lee over the path that I took. Over there you can see the remnants of the Ford factory, just a leveled space with piles of shingle. And the interesting thing, finally, on this last clip, to note, is that the Riverly also originally veered off here to the left, because we're going to cross another bridge now that leads nowhere. And I know all about these bridges that lead to nowhere because I've taken thousands of them in my past. And you have to go back to where you came from. So, um, let's just quickly go up to this and see what we see. So we see a bridge. We see canal boats that I mentioned earlier, but if I walk over here, and I know this because I've done it in the past. Um, cross this. And we see again a, quite a dramatic difference. An unused bit of the original River Lee. So the River Lee now runs to my right. And this presumably just leads off nowhere. Because it's a, a bit that's been made you know redundant by the straightening of it and perhaps you know through the years when numerous things were tried to make it navigable before they invested all this time and money on mate on you know doing this big one with the high rise they maybe tried other things there's a lot of water in there which perhaps indicate a very ancient um some form of marina or something and there's still a industrial zone there to this day so if one had the time and the resources and the money and stuff you could perhaps research all this you know there's original iron gating there behind that so we leave the river behind on our final stretch of this journey into the town but so far Apart from the increase in noise, people shouting and bulldozers, engines, air conditioners, diesel, motors, traffic, cars, main roads, high-rise buildings, street lighting, warning signs, security dogs, alarms, people loitering on street corners. Apart from all that, it's pretty rosy, so let's take a journey into this ponder's end which is quite apt 
Okay, as we head into Ponds End, um, a quick digression. There aren't many things that send a chill down my spine, but this is one of them. It probably sends a chill down mum's spine as well, and perhaps dad's, but we're moving on at a million miles an hour at the moment, so that will give us something to run away from. Um, I just seem to recall that the headquarters is in Ponder's End of Kings, so a little reminder of one's roots, progress and journey, and we step up the pace as we sigh and breathe in the final leg of this. Now heading into Pontezem Park, where unfortunately that child came to an end. I've just bought some chips, um, joining in with the locals really, served by a Greek. And um, A, because I was hungry, B, because they're a quid. And um, don't forget, I have just walked nearly six miles. So, this is cheap fill. Um, oh my god. Um, but, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I bought the chips also because they're proper chips and you don't get proper chips anymore in London. And when I went in, I said, What are your chips, mate? Uh, uh, like, mate, are they proper chips? In that sort of accent. And um, he said, Yes, proper chips. Do you want to try one? I said, No, just load me up. So I've got a full cornet here of freshly cut, freshly deep fried, grossly unhealthy English style chips. Not the French fry potato mash of which we've become accustomed in recent years. So I'm enjoying this and my mouth is watering in anticipation. But before I stop the camera, we're just going to dive into the park. So, just stepping up the pace now to get rid of, get rid of those King's people. Oh dear, still have nightmares about that. Um, right. Uh, very quickly, this is Ponder's End Park. Right, and um, there's a few gang members over there with nothing to do. And um, a blocked off area there from a recent murder. I can't see any flowers or evidence of this murder and one would be a bit psychotic to be wanting that sort of thing so I'm not on that route but I just thought there may be some memorial um, Interestingly enough, I just found out we're in the borough of Enfield now. And I didn't know that Enfield was a borough, but Ponder's End is in Enfield. So there we are, that's something that I've just learned. This is Ponder's End Park Regeneration. So, and I'm, only, I'm the only white person in the park today, apart from a few Slovakian construction workers and this retired Greek sailor who ran out of fuel on his way back. And, um, stand over there which is probably quite aspiring for this area um, always nice to be in the space look at that nice space Live and uncut. I don't believe in editing. Um, I believe in ebbing the flow. <laughs> the risk of being boring. Um, I just thought there may be some sort of memorial or flowers laid in this park in memory of this 
child that was axed to bits. Um, but uh, alas not. So, we are wasting time here at the moment. <laughs> Looking for something that doesn't exist. Oh no, hang on. <laughs> as with, <laughs> as with, I told you before, my life cannot be scripted. It cannot be scripted. This is not made up. This is not prefabricated. Look at that. There is a whole wall of flowers. Um, look at that. The picture of the child there. And look at that, there must be 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, maybe 80 wreaths of flowers there from school kids, teachers, family members, friends of family, um, community housing, etc, etc. So I'll end this clip with maybe a few of the messages. Having just walked six miles, we can maybe rest in peace Leroy reaching out Leroy Travis James may be the road rise to meet you may the wind always be at your back may the sunshine warm upon your face may the rains fall soft upon your fret fields and until we meet again may the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand Leroy Travis James who's obviously had a, a birthday since then and somebody has given him a mountain bike happy birthday sleep well we all miss you this doesn't look right where the is Mrs Doe Jesus Christ only a moron would leave the house without an address. <laughs> oh, honestly. No, Dad will relate to that. I seem to remember it. it was an 8 or a 12 or something near Tesco's. You know, only a moron wouldn't write it down when given to on the phone twice. Only a moron wouldn't have <laughs> credit in his phone so he could call the number to find out where this bloody person lives. Um, so I'm very much in touch with my moronic side today. Nothing to be proud of, something to run away from with great haste. Just like that King sign back there. So, but there will be an ending to this. We twist, turn, tail and trail on this path of life. Onwards and upwards to a positive descent, plateau and conclusion. Good night, thank you for watching. Nothing. Okay, my life. Mrs. Doe, are you there? Mrs. Doe! Doe.